YouTuber Enios, it's me, Scotty G. Scott, what the hell is this? Hey, buddy. Checking out my super video, I see. This has got to be a joke, right? I mean, you even mentioned the wrong doctor being thrown in the furnace by Negan. Excuse me, buddy, but I think I know what I'm talking about. I mean, after all, I am one of the showrunners of The Wandering Dead. The Walking Dead. It's The Walking Dead. How can you not even know the name of the show? The Walking Dead? Oh, come on. What kind of lame old name is that? You silly Billy! Get out! Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on The Walking Dead Season 11 Episode 7. As is the norm with all my videos, I won't be holding back on any spoilers, so please do keep that in mind. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin! Once again, I felt that this was another solid episode of The Walking Dead, which nicely sets up next week's mid-season finale. Or is it mid-season third finale? Because there's 24 episodes this season, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I like this episode, even if it does contain a few moments which I thought were a bit dumb and could have been improved on. For example, I didn't really like the way in which the episode began. So the episode starts with Negan, Maggie, Gabe and Elijah in the woods and they reconvene there after escaping from that house that they were in last week. So basically they're in the woods and then this random walker appears. The camera then cuts to Elijah and he's upset. And then Maggie says, that's his sister's best friend. And I don't know, but for some reason, the first thing that came into my head was that scene out of Spaceballs. It's his sisters. Fathers, brothers, nephews, cousins, former roommates. I know I'm being really facetious and nitpicky here, and of course part of me is just joking, but I kind of feel like this scene would have been a bit better if Elijah had said himself, Oh no, that's, I don't know, that's Mary, my sister's best friend, oh my god, because it always feels like, to me, other characters are explaining Elijah's emotions for him. I can think of a few examples since he was introduced in which he's looking upset, for example, and then Maggie will say, oh, this is Elijah, he's sad because his sister's missing, oh, this is Elijah, he's looking for his sister, and it's like... Just let the dude explain it himself for once, you know? I get that in this moment he's lost for words and he's sad and, you know, etc, but... I don't know, I just think if this dude had more agency, if he spoke out a bit more, maybe then I would like him a bit more, maybe I'd resonate with him a bit more, because, you know, as it stands, I just think he's a, a meh character, I don't really care that much about him, and I think part of the reason why is because Maggie keeps telling us what he's feeling rather than him actually saying something. I also thought the scene which came after this was a bit dumb, because bear in mind that these characters are on the run from the Reapers, the next thing they all do is stand around in the woods having a funeral for this girl. I get it, I get Elijah's sad, I get he wants to say goodbye, but I don't know, I thought these characters would have more of a sense of urgency, you know, we're on the run, the Reapers are coming, quickly, let's go, let's go, let's find somewhere else to stay rather than saying, oh yeah, it's fine, let's let's break for 20 minutes and have a funeral. Like, have you really got time to be doing this? That's not to say that I disliked every single scene in which these characters featured, because I did like the conversation that Maggie and Negan had. They were both trying to justify their actions, and I think there was some nice back and forth between them. Maggie says that because there were no families at the satellite outpost and no children there, then in her mind, what they did attacking that place isn't as bad as some of the stuff that Negan's done. But Negan quite rightly comes back and says, well, hang on, all my people had families, me, they had friends, they had girlfriends, and I know about Gracie, I know that Rick killed her father, or maybe he doesn't know that Rick killed her father, but he knows that someone from Alexandria killed her father, and now basically Aaron's taken her and raising her as her own, so yeah, obviously the saviors did have kids and did have family, so yeah, I like that, I like the points that they both make, I also like that Maggie then comes back and says, well hang on, at least we didn't torture people in front of their friends and family, obviously referencing what he did to to Glenn and Abe. So yeah, there was a lot that I liked about our conversation, and it does appear that at one point, Negan is finally going to apologize to Maggie for killing Glenn when he says that if he could have gone back, he would have done things differently. However, instead of apologizing to Maggie, he comes out and says that if I could have done it again, I would have killed all of you. Now, it's easy to think that in the situation, Negan is just being a dickhead and just being an asshole for no reason, but I think it actually makes sense when you think about it, because the entire reason that Negan's community collapsed was because he underestimated Rick's group. If he had killed all the people at that lineup, you could arguably say that 
His people wouldn't have died. He wouldn't have lost the, the sanctuary. He wouldn't have had to rot in Alexandra's prison. So I can understand why he says, you know, if I could do it again, I'd kill you all because he was living like a king at sanctuary. And why wouldn't he want to go back to that? I did actually discuss this with someone on Reddit and they came back and said someone would have risen up against Negan eventually. So you can't just say it's Rick's fault. You know, it would have happened eventually because of the way he was, the way he was in charge, the things he was doing, it would always piss people off. And yeah, I do agree with that, but... I think in Negan's mind, he sees that Rick is the catalyst because until Rick came along, everyone fell in line. You know, Rick was the one who went out and rounded all the different communities up and got them to fight together. And without him, Negan would have arguably still been in power. Okay, it might have only been for a couple more years. He might have been delaying the inevitable. But I mean, I think Negan would have taken a couple more years of being in power over what he's had to go through since then. So yeah, I understand it. And I think it's more realistic him coming out and saying that instead of going... Oh, I'm so sorry that Glenn died because ultimately to Negan, Glenn was just another randomer that he killed. He was just another nobody. It was just another day in the office for him, you know, smacking people's heads in. And again, it might not be what Maggie wants to hear, but I think it would be like, you know, if Rick came out and apologized for all the random people that he shot and went up to some character and said, oh, I'm sorry for killing your husband who was savior number 56. I'm so sad because Rick doesn't give a shit. Rick doesn't care about all the random people he killed, neither does Negan. And again, I get that as viewers, we want Negan to say, oh, I'm so sorry, Maggie, I'm so sorry, but I just don't think it fits with his character. And you know, people can disagree with me on that, because again, I've seen some people on Reddit say that, oh, I wish they went down the comic book route, and I wish he'd apologised and, you know, said I'm really sorry for what happened, but, but I think it's more consistent with his character on the TV show to say, no, I would have gone back and killed you all so I could remain in power. So, yeah, that's just my way of, of seeing it anyway. But, yeah, I, I like that. I liked how they changed it up on the TV show. That's not to say in the future that you might not come out and apologize for kidding Glenn because ultimately I think that a lot of fans do want to see that. So maybe they will do that sometime later down the road. But as it stands, I like the approach they've taken to Negan. Even though I did enjoy the conversation that these two had, it's hard to fight the feeling that we're just going around in circles with these two because it does feel like they keep treading a lot of the same ground because every week these two talk, it's almost like Negan is going, I'm right, and then Maggie goes, no, I'm right, and then Negan goes, no, actually, I'm right, and then Maggie goes, I'm right, you know, etc, etc, and it's, it's kind of the same, like, we're not really, not really getting anywhere with these two, I don't know, I am getting a bit tired of it, even though I did like, even though, sorry, I did like this conversation, it does also feel like it's just kind of talking about the same stuff every single week with these two. Anyway, the episode ends with Maggie taking a leaf out of the Whisperer's book as she rounds up a group of walkers and then leads them to the Reaper's hideout. And I did find it to be a bit unrealistic that they were able to round up such a large group of walkers in such a short space of time. Now, especially seeing as Negan is the only one who's actually had experience uh, being a Whisperer. So yeah, I thought that was a bit, a bit contrived how they've suddenly got this massive group that they're going to send to to Meridian next week. And also Maggie needs to be careful because she wants the supplies there, but sending the group of walkers this big, it's quite possible they might just kind of charge through all the buildings and destroy everything, you know, and contaminate the food and destroy the, the warehouse of food or whatever. So uh, yeah, I don't know, it seems a bit silly, but we'll see what happens next week. As the group are walking amongst the undead, Elijah spots a woman walker, and of course it's his sister who was referenced earlier. Thankfully Elijah doesn't react like that annoying kid Sam did back in season 6 by, you know, screaming and alerting all the walkers to his presence. He tries to hold back the tears and then Maggie reaches out to him and holds his hand and, you know, basically tries to tries to stop him from crying, you know, and then it helps him keep it together. And I thought that was quite a nice scene, you know, that did kind of touch me, even though at this point in time I don't particularly have any affinity to Elijah. I don't really like him or dislike him, don't care either way. But yeah, I don't know. I thought that, that was quite nice. Weird that I'm saying a scene of his dead sister walking amongst a group of walkers is quite nice, but hopefully you know what I mean. And earlier on in the episode, Elijah says to Maggie that leave the leader to me, leave the leader of the, the Reapers to me because he wants to kill Pope, I assume. And I can totally see his dead sister biting Pope's face next week. Speaking of Pope, Pope is in this episode and he's angry as per usual. And I know it does seem like I'm always hating on Pope, but it just seems like he always says the same stuff over and over again. I mean, it feels like this is like the 10th time that he's come out and said, Are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed of what you've done? Are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed? He just kind of reminds me of like my old angry history teacher. Josh, you didn't do your homework. Are you not ashamed? Are you not ashamed of yourself for not doing your homework yet again? Also, nothing comes from that scene last week in which it was hinted that Pope knew who Daryl was, so 
that scene seems rather pointless now. I don't know, maybe they'll do something about it next week, but yeah, I was expecting to see some follow-up to that this week and we didn't get any. Anyway, long story short, Pope tells Daryl and Leah to go, go out searching, go on a mission together. Leah and Daryl come across this random dude who says he doesn't know who they are, he doesn't want any trouble, he's just caring for his wife and his son. Leah talks to Pope on the radio and says what should we do about this guy and then Pope says kill him. And then they go in the house and basically what happens is that Leah can't bring herself to kill him, she tells him to escape and take the kid with him because it looks like the mother has been bitten. So them two go off and Leah also can't bring herself to put the mum down, instead Daryl does it. And the whole point of this scene is to make us go, oh Leah's not that bad after all, look she cries when this woman is dying she let the kid go she's actually a really nice lady but you know what it doesn't change anything to me i don't care i still don't like her so i don't like that the show is trying to force me to like her by having scenes like this in it because yeah i still can't stand her and i still hope that with connie back she's gonna bite the bullet soon last but not least we go to the commonwealth where eugene princess fake steph and ezekiel are being punished by clearing out houses of walkers after what they did last week Towards the end of the episode, Eugene and Fake Steph spot this couple having a picnic and there's walkers sneaking up behind them and they're unaware about it and they do what most people would do in that situation and they go to help them. Shout out to Eugene here because he's an absolute beast. Like he comes running in and he's like shoulder charging at these walkers and he's taking them out with ease and... Where was this Eugene four or five seasons ago? After Eugene kills the walkers, the dickhead Sebastian stands up and instead of thanking Eugene for saving his life, he comes out and berates him for ruining his date. After one episode, I already hate Sebastian as much as I did in the comics, if not more, so yeah, credit for the TV show for making him so hateable. Eugene doesn't back down against Sebastian, and, and they argue, and Sebastian says, who do you think you're talking to? And Eugene says, a small man, and then he punches him square on the nose, which was so fucking satisfying. Abraham would have been proud. Whilst these two are arguing, another walker is slowly making its way towards his date, and then fake Steph kills the walker and the blood spills over his date's top, at which point Sebastian gets angry again because you've ruined her shirt and my god, could this guy be any more of a prick? Finally, I want to talk about Yumiko, who meets up with her brother Tommy whilst he's on his lunch break, and to be honest, Yumiko really pissed me off in this scene because once again she says to Tommy, why don't you be a surgeon? Don't you want to be a surgeon? You could be doing more. You could be a surgeon. The thing is, Tommy has already told her that he's happy doing what he's doing. This is the happiest he's ever been working in his shop, you know, baking cakes. Why does she keep pushing the idea that, oh, you have to be a surgeon. You have to be a surgeon. The man's happy. Leave him alone. Let him do what he's doing, for God's sake. And then Tommy is taken away by the Commonwealth soldiers because, I don't know, I guess it was because Yumiko was shouting his mouth off about him being a surgeon when he kept telling her not to. I want to quickly mention that whilst Tommy and Yumiko are in this building, the Commonwealth are broadcasting propaganda over the speakers, and one phrase that I picked up on in particular was the phrase, we're all in this together. And I think I picked up on that phrase in particular because it's a phrase that Boris Johnson likes to use a lot in the UK, and, you know, it's obviously not true because he can do whatever the fuck he wants, and the working class can't, so we're obviously not all in this together, like he says. And it's exactly the same at the Commonwealth. I mean, the elites, they can do what they want, but the lower classes, the people like Eugene, they get punished for standing up for themselves. I don't think that was on purpose by any means, because, you know, it's, a, it's an American show. I don't think uh, they wanted to make a political statement about the Conservatives, but I don't know. I, I It reminded me of Boris Johnson. It reminded me of the stuff they come out with, and uh be interesting now to see if any people unsubscribe, because... I talk badly about the Tories, but fuck it, I don't really care. Anyway, Yumiko goes and meets discount Jim Carrey, whose name I can't remember, but he says that, oh, let me have your brother for a bit longer, and let me have your friends for a bit longer, and I'll, I'll do something for you, you'll see something. I, I don't know, I don't really know what his game he is here. He obviously wants Yumiko to help him in the future, but I don't know what he's getting out of taking her brother away and... I don't know. I, I guess again. I guess that's something that we'll we'll have to to wait and see, and and you know find out what happens next week. Anyway, Yumiko meets the real Stephanie, and she actually has lines of dialogue this week. She talks, and I think I've got another crush to add to my Walking Dead crush list, and it would be a better list than the shitty one that Scotty G did. So yeah, overall, I like this episode. I have seen some people complain about the pace and. You know, at times it does feel like a typical episode before the mid-season finale in which it's just kind of there to set things up and it's not really moving forward a lot. But even though it was a bit slow, it didn't really bother me because I liked the content that we got. I liked, you know, the conversations with Maggie and Negan. I liked the stuff at the Commonwealth. And yeah, I thought it, thought it was a good episode. Not the best, but yeah, it was, it was decent. It was okay. I liked it.
Also, before I go, I want to shout out to Adog00, JarJar2421, TheFerg741, NickRuss, and RevDev for all being members. Thank you so much for signing up to be Scotty G's best buddy. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Did you like this episode? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know, and I shall see you all very soon. Take care. Goodbye.